Welcome to Focus Today. I'm your host, Perry Atkinson, and delighted as always to have in the studio Mr. Patrick Doyle. He heads up Veritas Counseling, and we're here to talk about something that probably you have experienced but never defined it, and mm. that's betrayal. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously you selected this topic because you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would have a job without it. Really? Yeah, I mean, so many of the things I deal with are people who've been betrayed in various ways. You know, betrayal doesn't come just in, like, a spouse cheating. Betrayal comes in many forms. You know, a parent betraying a child. Uh, I can't tell you how many situations I've dealt with where a parent abandons a child for whatever reason, you know. That's a profound betrayal, and it, it, it leaves a very deep mark in the soul of a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people who get betrayed. I've, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who been in business with somebody they trusted and then the next thing you know that person absconds with all the money and you know never talks to him again and mm -hmm. all that stuff I mean there's just so many ways in which people betray each other and so one of the things I see is that people that, so I don't think there's any doubt about the fact that betrayal is prevalent and how would you define it pop popular somebody um, breaks your trust in a profound way they, they harm you. They, somebody that you trust and that you let in then takes that trust and uses it against you in a way that harms you. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so it, it's no doubt about the fact that it's happening. But what I see so much is people who have been betrayed who are still dealing with it years and years and years after the betrayal. So let me go through your little thing that I've learned that okay. actually is true. <laughs> <laughs> Something I said that yeah. was true. <laughs> uh, whatever the emotion surfaces, usually anger, sometimes other yeah. things. Yeah. Below that is uh, depression. Hurt. We, hurt, depression. Uh huh. And then um, you have this thing called injustice. Yes. Is betrayal in the injustice camp. Yes, it's a profound injustice. And usually, um, the, one of the reasons why betrayal, I think, is worse is because usually betrayal happens with someone who you have extended an, a, a large amount of trust to. The deeper the betrayal, I would say the deeper the trust you've extended. So, uh, a lot of people think, well, I've been betrayed, they just kind of write it off. So, yeah. you're saying something else happens in the soul. Yeah. I don't, think it's, I, I don't think you can do that with anything. I don't think if you get hurt or you get betrayed uh, that you can just write it off. I mean, I think we think we can, mm -hmm. but in the long run, it affects us. And it starts to affect our relationships. It starts to affect our internal thought process. It starts to affect how we view the world, how we view others, how we view ourselves. But it's, um, it's a slow process. So it's not like, you know... Um, it's not a, a jolting process usually, so you, you think you're okay. So it's the, uh, the analogy of the frog and the slowly heated up water. It's, mm -hmm. It develops over time. And then, because, think about this, because someone else betrayed you, you now have terrible relationships. Yeah. I, I don't know why, how that helps you, but that's what I see happening over and over and over again, is that the betrayal really messes with the person who was harmed, particularly, and almost always, when the person who did the betraying won't own it. Do if, they see it as betrayal? Well, most people who, who do betrayal rationalize, minimize, yeah. justify, deny, spiritualize. So right. they're, they're trying to avoid responsibility, and that's part of the betrayal, is that you don't have enough value for me to own your behavior. I mean, if we had a relationship and you do something that harms me or you betray me, and you come to me and say, oh, I, that was on me, I, that, I repent. Well, the person that you betrayed is going to come around, right? But if you don't ever do that, then the person that got betrayed is going to have to deal with that injustice. And how we deal with that injustice will determine how our relationships function, will determine sometimes I think a lot of where our spiritual life goes. It'll turn, determine, it'll have a big effect on our, our peace level internally. And so I think it's a very important thing. And from a Christian perspective, I mean, holding on to an offense is a very damaging is a very damaging process, and I don't know anybody who can avoid being offended, <laughs> or being betrayed, or being hurt. It, it happens to everybody. Okay, uh, betrayal perceived or real? I mean, it can that, be it can be both. It can be both. But the what, injustice perceived or real? Yeah, can be both, right? Okay. But but 
what I see in betrayal is I see so many situations where it's, it's a no doubter that somebody betrayed you. Um, and then the, what I see the person do is spinning in their uh, ability to try to cope with it. And what I'd like to do today is try to give some people some, some uh, tips on how to deal with that stuff in a way that gives you relief, gives you peace, instead of keeping you in the spin of, you know, w thinking about it and, you know, staying up at night thinking about how to get them back and, you know, All what right, you're going to say let me throw another to log on the fire. Okay. Spiritual portrayal. Yes, it's the worst. Because what we here at the Dove have discovered yeah. uh, through the years, um, the people who listen and watch has shifted. Oh. Years ago, primarily we were preaching to the choir. <laughs> Okay. Right. All right. Now we have surveyed the audience, and uh -huh. it's it's broken into three parts. Those who number one, those who are Christians, fairly solid in their faith, churchgoers, right. right. they listen and watch because mm -hmm. they want the constant enrichment. Right. The next group are those who have been betrayed spiritually. Ah. Uh -huh. They have stepped out of the church. Okay. They're angry, upset, yeah. they, they think it's hypocritical, yeah. but they still have a spiritual need in their life yeah. and they listen and watch because the dove becomes their spiritual enrichment. Right. And then the other third are literally non-believers who are sampling us trying to figure out what this Christian thing's all about. Right. But if you go to the third that has been betrayed by the church, yes. my stars, the pain that is there is unbelievable. <sighs> yeah. And you know, I wish I could say that I've never dealt with that, but the truth <laughs> is it's a huge part of what I deal with is spiritual betrayal. It is the worst because you talk about trusting someone at a deep level right. and you give them um, respect and, and access to helping you live your life differently and then you find out that person is a complete false, you know, phony, liar, whatever, yeah. uh, or they do harm. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to who have been molested by people that are spiritual leaders. I mean, physically, they've been betrayed on an emotional level. You know, they've been burned in business deals. Churches who have mistreated people and acted like nothing happened. You know, so the, the hypocrisy of that is a whole nother level of harm that happens. And I can't tell you, too, so someone in a church leadership position does something harmful, betrays someone, and then the person that's betrayed becomes the victim of their betrayal and then they become the villain that the church community excommunicates when they're the one that was harmed. Yeah. And so it's yeah. it's it's double it's double harm because I don't just lose, you know, because I was harmed by this church leader. Now I'm harmed because I lost the entire church. These people that I thought were my family. And those are the ones that we hear from. Yeah. Um and the uh, it's amazing that they're still seeking God. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that's yeah. the neat thing about yeah, it. At yeah. least it didn't totally wipe them out. Yeah. You know. I agree. And you know, it's, it, I think it's only God's mercy that that continues to happen. Right. So, listen, I don't think that that reality, based on my understanding of history and what I've experienced in my life, is ever going to change. Mm. I don't think you're ever going to have a church that doesn't have people in it that are willing to betray you. And here's something else that I've said multiple times, and I've, I've, on one hand, people just stand up and cheer, and on the other hand, some people kind of jeer, but I believe it to be true. <clears throat> In Christianity, we have gotten to a place where we've checked our judgment out. We've checked our judgment at the door. We go into a church, and if somebody comes up to me and says, I'm a Christian, we drop the guard. Mm. Oh, they're a Christian. Well, I wouldn't do that. I would make someone prove to me that they're trustworthy. I don't care what they say. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to some place, I mean, years ago when I was going to a lot of meetings, uh, recovery meetings and a lot of church meetings, um, when I, early on in my life when I was trying to get my life together, I used to think that everybody in those places was there for the right reason. <laughs> so I'm just putting in their time. <laughs> and, and my naivete was quickly uh, uh, revealed and I realized that there's wolves in every circumstance. There's wolves in every, cir in every situation. So. One of the things that you know is if somebody is trustworthy, they're trustworthy because they have trustworthy behavior. Okay, not words. Yeah. And yeah. so if you don't know somebody enough to know how they deal with difficulty, how they handle harm, how they handle tension in a relationship, you drop your guard beyond what they've proven, you're going to be in trouble. Because last I checked, everybody I know is a sinner. <laughs> yeah. So what I would say to people is that, look, don't 
let somebody in until they've proven they're safe. Um, all right, one other little quick thought before we take a break here. Often those who have been betrayed, we'll call them the victim just for a moment, will begin to analyze the betrayal mm -hmm. and start to own it as their fault. Yeah. And now you got a double whammy. Yes. What right. do you do with that? Well, that's one of the most healing things I see on a daily basis, Perry, is when people come in and they tell the story yeah. about what happened. And then we're able to start to appropriately assign blame. Mm. So when somebody, I can't tell you how many people come in and they're, they're molested by somebody in their childhood. And they come in and they're still, and they still are blaming themselves for their molestation. Because the abuser said, well, it's your fault or you know, no one believed them or, or whatever. As soon as the person starts to realize that they were the victim of someone else's evil, the healing starts. Like, oh, it's not me? I didn't do that. I mean, how does a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old be the responsible party when somebody's molesting you? You can't be. Wow. So and as the blame starts to be appropriately applied, then freedom starts to come. All right, let us take a little break here. It's a big subject, obviously, and we're talking about uh, betrayal with Patrick Doyle. So when we come back, uh, maybe you have dealt with this. Maybe, uh, maybe a church has let you down or a church leader has let you down. What do you do? Well, mm -hmm. we'll get into that when we come right back. Hi, I'm Paulina, and I work at the Deaf TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact not only in our community, but around the world. It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. Okay, we're back uh, with Patrick Doyle, Veritas Counseling, and uh, we're dealing with the subject of uh, betrayal, and maybe you have been betrayed, maybe you don't know that you've been betrayed, but you have some feelings about somebody that betrayed you and you never put it in that category. Whatever it is, that somewhere along the line, the trust between you and somebody else got broken. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily by their action, not yours. Yeah. And I think that's what separates it from other emotions, that this is obviously a betrayal. Yeah. And um, through the years of ministry that I've been in the ministry for 40 some odd years, I can tell you that one of the hardest things to unwind is spiritual betrayal. Yeah. I Agreed. mean, where is God? Why did he allow this to happen? Mm -hmm. Who's this? What do I believe? Yada, yada. You go right. down the list of yeah. things and all of a sudden you're just, you're in a daze of how yeah. tangled this thing can become. Mm -hmm. Where do you start to unwind this thing? Well. First of all, I think it's really important that the person who feels betrayed or has been betrayed, that they find somebody that they can trust to tell the whole story to. One of the problems with, one of the, one of the problems with people who betray is that they don't deal with the truth. They, they, they lie, they rationalize, they minimize, they justify. So, it's, so you're trying to get to the bottom of some circumstance and they keep avoid, avoiding responsibility. So the person who's been betrayed starts to feel kind of crazy like, well, I'm pretty sure this happened. But no, well, because, in, and particularly like you said, if it's spiritual and the person has some sort of authority, yeah. spiritual authority, they're like, oh no, you're not, you're not seeing that right. Or they utilize their position and their authority to dissuade you from the truth. Yeah. That's a very painful reality. And so um, find somebody you trust that you can tell the whole story to who's not going to be a liar, uh, not going to be a manipulator, who has your best interest in mind. And I, and, you know, I think that's part of why people uh, in today's world love the internet, because you can find situations where mm. people are not in your circumstance where you can tell, you can hear them talk about stuff. And like, I think that's one of the reasons why the Dove is so popular, because people get that truth and in a way that's not um, biased or somebody trying to lord it over them. Have you ever been betrayed spiritually? Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, you I know. Mean, I, you, you don't know, have to know. You, you know somebody I know that yeah. I, that yeah. I uh, was in a church with, that yeah. was, I co-labored with, that I was an associate with, that, you know, evidently wasn't anything that he said. Threw you under the bus. And he was not what he said he was. I mean, now based on the behavior that he's displaying, that man was a liar. He was not anything that he portrayed. 
And I was neck deep in ministry with them. And I was, you know, we'd started a church together and blah, 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 blah. So, um, or ran a church together. He started it. I just came along. But, you know, that was profoundly painful. And then to, and then to watch the fallout of all the people that, you know, venerated that guy, thought he was a good guy, thought he had character. It, one of the things that people thought was he had such great character. And we find out, actually, no. <laughs> Well, I, I will say this for those of you who have been betrayed somewhere in the church world or in, you know, in spiritually or by a church leader. Uh, I've had it happen on a couple of occasions, blindsided. I yeah. mean, I got T-boned right. on a couple of occasions. And it, it, it rocks your world and you walk away and you kind of go, I mean, the first feeling you have is, I am done with ministry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if this is what it is, yeah. I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get treated like this in the business. The business world is a little bit more cold because it's usually contractual. Yeah, right. In the, in the spirit world or in the faith community, it's, you know, supposed to be trust and yeah. belief and right, right. kumbaya. Yeah. So when you get T-boned. Right. So what I had to do is I had to go back and I had to take a long walk with God and say, God, what happened? And I can tell you this, in the three or four times that it's happened in my life, mm -hmm. the answer was always the same. <laughs> and it usually comes in the form of a question. <laughs> you know what it is? What is your calling? Yeah. I had to go back to my calling. Yeah. I had to get out of helping other people and serving in another capacity. Right. I had to come back to my calling. Right. Which and when I was able to draw that line and get back mm -hmm. to what God called me to do, right. I realized that's the church world. Right. God bless them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm going to help you and support you, but from this position. Right. You from know? your calling. Yeah, from right. my calling. So the other thing that happens is that people that are betrayed have to go through a process of forgiveness to unhook themselves from the damage of the betrayer. All right. Now, that is a key point. Yeah. If we don't instruct and teach and preach yeah. the true meaning of communion, mm. if you don't clean yourself before communion, mm -hmm. leave the cup, go make mm. it right and come back. Mm -hmm. We don't preach that a whole lot. But I, that's one thing that my conviction before the Lord said, don't take the cup while you have this odd in your heart and mm -hmm. get it straightened out. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was I had to ask the Lord to forgive me for having such anger towards these yeah. people. Now listen. Anger is normal when yeah. you've been betrayed, uh, but it's not normal to stay there. Yeah. So I love how uh, Peterson translates that, that scripture that says, uh, in your anger, do not sin. Mm -hmm. Peterson says, in, go ahead, you do well to be angry because something's wrong. Yeah. Just don't let your anger be used for revenge, yeah. which is what I see over and over again is people spend a lot of time mentally and emotionally thinking about how to harm that person, how to get them back, right. how to expose them. And so what happens is your internal world becomes consumed by that harmful event. Or it takes up a lot of the space. It might not be consumed, but it's in there. So the process of forgiveness is a profound necessity for the, for the healing and the la uh, getting out of the way of the harm that the betrayer intended. Now. We've talked about it many times, Perry. I've done shows on it, and if people want to, I'd, I'd encourage them to find my show about forgiveness mm. and reconciliation because when I say forgive, I want to be very clear that what I'm saying is, when I say forgive, I'm not saying what the person did is okay. Mm. That's a lot of times what I hear people saying. Well, is it just okay that they did that? I'm like, no. What they did was a profound injustice, but forgiveness has nothing to do with them. Forgiveness is between you and God, and it's about you trusting God to do the justice that you so desperately want and want to be involved in. I have spent a lot of sleepless <laughs> nights con con Plotting. constructing <laughs> plans. Yes, yeah. constructing plans for, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh, vindication, getting them back. But God says, I want, I want you, son, to trust me to do the justice. Now, to be honest with you, I struggle there. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you know, I, I all of a sudden become Jonah. I'm like, well... You might be nice to them, though. You might have mercy on them. <laughs> you might no. forgive them. <laughs> you know, I, want, I want the, you know, the yeah. angry Old Testament yeah, to you kind of get pound of flesh. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so, you know, that that struggle that I would go through to come to a place of forgiveness is really the the hinge point for their betrayal not continuing to harm me. The other thing is, the scripture says in Psalm that you, if you turn your 
I'm paraphrasing here. Take your anger and your frustration, give it to God, mm -hmm. and say, Lord, your word says in, um, justice belongs to you. Yeah. You'll take care of the, yes. the revenge or whatever right. it is. If you truly do that, Psalm says you'll look for your enemy one day and they're gone. Yeah. And you know what? Of the three major people that have done that to me in my life, all three of them were pastors. Mm -hmm. All three of them are out of the ministry today. Yeah, exactly. So, so forgiveness, remember, I'd also say this, is a process. It's not an event. Yeah. And I talk to people about this all the time. They think that they have to forgive them, which means as soon as they do that, all the issues go away. Mm -hmm. Listen, forgiveness is going to be a process because I'm driving down the road, minding my own business, not trying to think about it, and all of a sudden it shows up. I didn't ask for it. Mm -hmm. It just shows up. You know, or, or I talk to somebody who reminds me. And so as we go through our lives, we have to keep applying the process of forgiveness, which is I'm going to trust God for the justice and I'm going to get out of the way of that. And so what happens is, too, when somebody betrays you and it's undealt with, this is what I see happening. And, 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 and you know, I'm, when I say betrayal, I'm talking about on any level. So betrayal, undealt with, starts to sort of act like um, responsibility Velcro. <laughs> so yeah. then I'm just walking through my day and because I have this betrayal that's unresolved I start picking up responsibility for all kinds of betrayals that aren't mine mm. and, and, the, and it gets really complicated and life gets really difficult meanwhile the betrayer isn't even, doesn't even care they don't even know what happened they don't even remember it probably because their denial is so good Right? That's how they continue to, to, to live and act that way, is they have denial. They just, they look you dead in the eye and lie to you and convince you that they're, tr they're right in telling you the truth, even though anybody who saw the situation would know they're lying. Yeah. But they can be very convincing. So your process of forgiveness is about you detaching from their harm and starting to live in a way that's free and, and starting to do, deal with your responsibility Velcro. Generally, Unrepentant betrayers have what I call responsibility Teflon. Nothing sticks to them. It all slides off and sticks to you. And so if you, if you get into a situation where you, you start to have what I would call responsibility Velcro, you're going to have more betrayal than you're going to have ability to deal with. Wow. Um, that's a great sign to take inventory in your life. And I, I yeah. want you to kind of, when we come back from the break, deal with... Okay. How do we know we got this Velcro? Yeah. We're attracting this because yes. something caused it. It was probably the initial betrayal, mm -hmm. and you keep coming up with it. Um, but the other thing is that sooner or later, um, you you got to deal with the fact that there's nothing you can do about it. Yep, that's that's what that's. And what, the other yeah. thing is, if you're not careful, the devil is using this in your life to keep you away from the very thing that God is encouraging you to do. It says, forsake not right. the gathering or the fellowship or right. being together. So if one church hurts you, don't categorize all churches there. Mm -hmm. Find another church and get involved mm -hmm. with a family. So yeah. uh, we'll deal with this some more in just a moment. Hold on, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paula and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back. Uh, Patrick Doyle's with us today from Veritas Counseling. Your number, buddy. 622-622-6018. That's area code 541-622-6018. Right. And uh, he does do private counseling. And, um, yeah. you know, and you got some people helping you. So yes. that's good. Yes. Um, but being on the dub overwhelms them at times. But yeah. you get letters from all over the world. I do. Yeah. I got one from, uh, I got an email from the Virgin Islands this, this week, yeah. Canada, all over the United States. You can go to VeritasCounseling.com. You can. And uh, check it out his website, VeritasCounseling.com. But, but a lot of it comes through the Dove's YouTube site. Yeah. So, and I, everything you see here will be up on the Dove si uh, website within mm -hmm. a couple of hours, and you mm -hmm. can watch it again or send it to a friend. All right, so um, 
we've all been betrayed mm -hmm. one way or another. It's when somebody breaks their trust. Yeah. And uh, boy, it happens at multiple levels. Mm -hmm. How do you know if we're suffering from it? Well, generally, uh, if you have, if you have um, like persistent thoughts about a s specific instance where something happened and you have s specific thoughts that are continual, that come on a regular basis that just loop and they never go away and it's about this one event that happened and how you were treated and what happened. Generally, I would say if that's happening, you have felt or determined in your own heart that you've been betrayed. Especially but, if that thought turns to anger. Yes, well, yeah, exactly, and it disturbs you, right? Yeah, and it causes right, you to have right, uncomfortable right. feelings. So one of the things that's helped me in marriage is that, you know, years ago when my, my mentor said, if, if, if you can whip it, in your own spirit and not have to bring it up with your wife, that'd be good. If you can't whip it and it just keeps bugging you, then you gotta talk about it. Hmm. So like somebody you know, is doing something a little irritating, instead of bringing up every irritating thing, and we have to deal with that, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, you know, which early in my marriage I thought was what you had to do, you had to, you had to resolve everything, before the sun goes down actually. And so it was when I realized, oh well, you know, I, don't, I can let that go, it's not, I'm, that's not gonna bother me. It's like I understand that's, that's my wife, that's how she is. It's, you know, I love her, it's okay fine. But if it's something that just won't go away, I, have to, I can't let that stay because what, what betrayal will turn into if it's not dealt with is resentment. Okay, so. And resentment will ruin your life. You're kind of touching on another area of betrayal. And that's, maybe it's done innocently or ignorantly with someone that you love. I mean, if you're raising kids, they're gonna betray you. Absolutely. What do you do? <laughs> Besides, hang them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. what do you do? You resist your urge <laughs> and you, you, you work on forgiveness, Perry. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> so, you know, I, and again, I, I, I see that, but you know, if you want to make a bad situation worse, react and try to get even. Yeah. Particularly with someone who has good denial. Because if you do that with someone who has good denial, you're just going to go in a circle. Because they're going to dodge and avoid responsibility and you're going to try to get them to take it and they're going to dodge. And, er and then the more you go around in that circle, the worse the trust, the more depleted the relationship becomes in terms of trustworthiness. And so it, it just deteriorates. And so, for example, if you're talking to someone who's a manipulator, mm -hmm. you should not talk anymore. Because a manipulator, it doesn't matter what you say, they're gonna just keep manipulating. Yeah. So at some point you just have to stop talking and start acting and saying, look, here's the boundary. And, and I would also refer people to the show on boundaries because I go through and talk about it. how do you do that? And so somebody who's betrayed you is gonna need a boundary if they are unrepentant. If someone's repentant, all of this stuff changes. Yeah, but a lot of them don't see themselves as having to repent. Exactly, because they're in denial. Right. They've rationalized, minimized, justified, right. spiritualized their actions towards you. And so if somebody's doing that, you're, what I see people doing is trying to talk them out of their position. You know, I, I'm so glad you said that publicly because I, I had to give that advice within the last week or so. And the, the advice was stop talking. <laughs> Go run deep. Right. And only deal with actions, don't deal with words. Right. Right. So if, if you're able to do that, see what happens is, is then so I, I set a boundary of the person. And, but here's the other thing. If somebody's betrayed you and you are desperate to have a relationship with that person, mm. you're probably going to put yourself at harm's yeah. way. Yeah. You have to be willing to let go of the relationship if the person is unrepentant. Mm. of their now, betrayal. One of the byproducts of betrayal is that you don't trust anybody again. Yeah. When I'm dealing with people who've been hurt by the church, it's really hard for them to trust the church. Yeah. And guess what? Right. Even trust God. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because if the church let them down, mm -hmm. then in their interpretation, God let them down. Well, Perry, I hate to say this on air, but do you know how many times I've heard in my office people say, if I had never become a Christian, most of the trauma that happened to me in my life would not have happened. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> and I think we're, it's a delicate thing. How do you represent God's love? Yeah. And come to Christ and have a relationship with Him? Well, yeah. at the same time, you're also putting on a uh, breastplate that yeah. 
basically says you're going to get arrows. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, so here's what I would go back to is that one of the reasons why I think that's become so prevalent is because people go to church and they drop their guard because they think all these people are good or they think the pastor because he's the pastor is a good guy. Well, you and I know that's not true. I've been through so many circumstances because somebody's a pastor does not mean they're a good guy. Mm -hmm. I've met many a liar. Okay, so here's the deal. But I, I've dealt with a lot of people who are just flat given wrong advice by a pastor. Uh, absolutely. It was over-spiritualized. Yes. Almost nonsense. Exactly. So you have to exercise your own judgment. And 90%, I'd say 99% of the people I've dealt with over time that God has blessed me to be involved with is that they had a gut instinct. And they ignored it. And they ignored it. Yeah. And I would say, if your gut instinct is saying there's something wrong with that guy, mm -hmm. trust your gut instinct, not the, not the rhetoric or the you know, environment that you're in. Trust your gut instinct. And listen, if it takes you longer to trust somebody, but it's legitimate, that's better than trusting too quickly and being harmed. So, you're saying something here that's so critical. We need to do a show on this. Okay. Your initial gut feeling. Yes. And the reason I'm bringing this up, it is usually right. It is. I would call it your spirit. Okay. Even in people who aren't spiritual. Yeah. I believe that the spirit is speaking. All right. Because I, we need to do a show on this. Because I, I mm -hmm. you're the counselor. <laughs> I'm a lay counselor. Don't call me. Call him. <laughs> so when I begin to unwind something and go back. Yeah. I usually find out that the initial gut feeling before the trauma ever happened or the situation, whatever the circumstances are, that initial gut feeling, the spiritual intuition they mm -hmm. had was correct. Yeah, exactly. But by the way, I, I did some testing on this, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. what you do in the corporate world. Yeah, yeah. And I tested very high with that. Yeah, and I exactly. Thought, hmm, you know, and I bet you every time in the past, I don't know if that's a spiritual gift or intuition or what it is. I think everybody, I think everybody has the spirit, uh, the, particularly those of us that are have a, 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 yeah. that are believers. But I think that's how God speaks to people. But I bet if we went back and we looked at some of your greatest failures in terms of decisions, mm. we would see you trusting your brain over your spirit. Absolutely. <laughs> and I see that a hundred percent of the time, Perry, in my own life and yeah. in the lives of hundreds of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so because what circumstances or facts will tell you one thing, yep. and you want their Mm -hmm. Spirit always requires faith and yeah. trust. Yeah, and it has information embedded in it that you cannot articulate. All right, so now as that relates to betrayal, yeah. it's usually the first feeling you have about somebody. Mm -hmm. could be a yellow flag. Yeah, okay. yeah, red flag. So what I'd like you to do is pay attention to those, and until they go away, pay attention to them. If somebody's over the top nice and, you know, they, they seem on the outside like everything's fine, but your spirit's going... Mm -hmm. I would pay attention to that. Um, and so, because that, if, it, uh, if it does nothing but slow down the trust that you build, well, that's not going to hurt you. But if you go too fast, and that person's not really who they say they are, that's going to end badly. But what I see all the time is that people are desperate to have a relationship. And so the higher the desperation, the lower the bar. Okay. The higher the desperation, the more I rationalize. So those of you who are on these match websites, uh -huh. Yeah. Be and careful. here's the deal. I, I've actually, this might come as a surprise, but I've actually encouraged many people to go onto those websites. But I do it with some instruction. Because one of the things I think is really helpful about those websites, and I say this all the time, if you're on a dating website, do not go out from behind the wall. Stay behind the safety of the website. Don't give out your cell phone number. Don't give out your email address. Keep all the communication in the site. Okay, because people who want to get you out of that quickly, that's a bad sign. It could be, yeah. So here's the thing, though, that I think is really helpful is that I've, I've instructed people to go onto those things because it's a very safe way to practice trusting your spirit. Hmm. Because you don't have to meet the person. It's all written. So you have a record of what's said, and you can show people what's being said, and you can get perspective. Because I think one of the things that can happen is you can really help you learn to trust your instincts in a way where you're not meeting somebody and you're not in danger yeah. and well it's a very I, safe I way to do it i'm going to defer to you on that because i uh, but I, people be, abuse it all the time though. be cautious yeah. yeah but those who are those who are still suffering from betrayal it, what's interesting to me is that they'll pass the betrayal off to 
uh, the people around them, their mm -hmm. environment. And that stigma ends up being a bad witness to the church. Mm. So if you're betrayed, how do we keep it within ourselves before you spread it around? <laughs> well, you, you mean not gossip about it? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, you know. I, mean, I, I realize you need to talk to somebody. Yes, that's, what I, that's why I said yeah. talk to somebody that has demonstrated that they have safety, okay. not somebody who's loose-lipped or right. a gossip or wants to, you know, the other thing that people do when they're betrayed is they do something we call coalition building. Mm -hmm. So someone's betrayed and instead of going to the person that betrayed them or talking to a confidant and getting themselves straight, they start to talk to other people and build a coalition. They build a group of people against this bad person who betrayed me, right? Interesting. So they, they build a, a whole little group of people that now see this person as bad, but no one's ever confronted. Mm -hmm. So now, now we have infected all these other people with, with ideas and thoughts about this person that may be accurate, but still they're not dealing with it. So the biblical example is that we deal with it. If you, if you confront the person about their betrayal and they lie, rationalize, avoid responsibility, don't repent, then, then you take the action of, okay, I'm going to take one other person with me and see what they say. And then it, as you do that, you're either going to have a relationship with that person because they repent or you're going to have to distance yourself from that person because they don't repent. And this is where I think people get hung up as they want, it, they want the outcome they want. Right. And you can't control it. Let's take a break. When we come back on the other side of it, let's deal with this. There's uh, people who are um, stuck in the portrayal. In other words, they, they, uh, they're not letting God in. And mm -hmm. I mean, it could be that God could use that betrayal to move them in another yes. direction. Yes. And they even closed the door on yep. that. Yep. All right, we'll be right back with Patrick Doyle in just a moment. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at the Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back uh, with Patrick Doyle doing our final segment on the subject of uh, betrayal. And it's possible in your life, if you're a human being and taking in oxygen, <laughs> you probably have been betrayed. Not to make that a uh, laughing matter, it's, it hurts, it, it yes. stings, it, it um, creates a lot of distrust, it creates anger, um, it, it tempers your outlook and view and your expectations. I mean, it just has a catastrophic effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, but one of the things we don't want you to do is stay there. Yeah. Um, there's an, there, I have a sign in my office. It's, Winston Churchill said it. Um, when you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> don't stay don't there. hang out. Don't stay there. Right. You know, so when you're going through this, right. you move through the process. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, first of all, I don't think God was caught off guard that you were betrayed. No. And probably mm -hmm. God used the betrayal to mm -hmm. move you in another direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take it from there. Yeah. So <clears throat> from my perspective, what I see happening is that people get hurt and then the hurt becomes a place that they live. Yeah. And so they identify themselves. with Yes. I'm and a so, victim. Right. So whatever the betrayer was saying or whatever their actions told them, then I start to take that message on as that's the truth of who I am. But that's not what God is saying. That's not the truth of what God is saying. So if I don't, th here's a couple of practical tips. One thing is, is I think that when you're rehearsing an event in your mind repeatedly, you can't get away from it. It just always, it finds you. You're not even looking for it and it shows up. One of the first things I would say to somebody like that is that, look, <clears throat> you've got to write that down. You've got to write it down in as much detail as possible with no editing. Yeah. Because in your mind, it stuff morphs and you can't grab a hold of it and it's gone and then it comes back and it brings friends and what about this and okay, you write it down and when I write it down and in two weeks, I pull that up, it's exactly the same as when I wrote it down. Mm. So I, I'm able to sort of get my hands around it and I can also repeatedly share that event exactly the same with someone. 
So here's what happened to me, and they write it down. So I, I have people do this all the time. I want them to write down what happened. I want them to write down what their trauma was. And I got to tell you, it's not easy. Most of us think, oh, yeah, okay, and then we go to do it, and we're like, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, if somebody would have found some of my early journals, I might be in, they might have locked me up. <laughs> because when I was writing, honestly, it was very damning things that I was saying, very terrible things. There's a lot of horror inside of me. And so <clears throat> I was afraid to get it out. I tell people this a lot too. Look, if you're going to write honestly, you have to make sure that whatever you're writing on, whether it be electronic or whether it be pen and paper, that whatever you're writing on is 100% safe. Because if you don't believe it's safe, you believe somebody's going to be able to get to it, you won't be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, subconsciously. Oh, I'll be able No, you won't. So <clears throat> I want people to just, you know, buy a lockbox, buy a, I don't care what you got to do, get a password. And, but honestly, with, with no holds barred, with no editing, write down how you feel and what the event was and how it went down and then get it out. <clears throat> and as you do that, see, as you get that stuff out, it starts to lower the intensity of your reactivity. So if I've got all this stuff inside of me and then I'm trying to relate with somebody who hasn't betrayed me and I get a little sense that maybe that's what they're doing, I'm now having a level eight reaction to a level two event. Mm. So and if I've had a lot of betrayal, then I can see it everywhere. And I can then start anticipating it. And then I can start living in anxiety of it. Okay, so getting this stuff down, getting it into the light is one of the things that takes its power away. Where does God come in? <clears throat> well, when you get into the light, then you can also start to get very clear about what it is, what actually happened, where the betrayal was. And this is what I was saying before. So. As you sit down and, you know, I've, I've walked just so many people through this. They write it down, they bring it in, and we read it. And then it's, it's not rocket science. They're like, oh, oh, so my dad was abusing me. And that's why I think that. Oh, okay. So you get a little bit of a 30,000 foot view. You're like, oh, it, it's not that, that, it's not rocket science. But once you start assessing blame appropriately, that's when the ten intensity starts to go down. But if you don't, if you're not able to assign, if you keep taking on the blame, how are you going, how is intensity going to go down? So maybe in that process, we realize that as a result of your betrayal, you did X, Y, or Z that you feel guilty about. Mm -hmm. Well, then we'll deal with X, Y, and Z because we can't deal with the betrayer. They're not here. My dad never apologized to me. My dad never said he was sorry. We never had a conversation about it. And I don't have any heartache about what he did because of the process I went through of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So the, the person that betrayed you doesn't have to be a part of it. All right, uh, big question, not enough time. <laughs> um, betrayal happens a lot in marriages. Oh yeah. And I'm sure you, yep. majority of what you deal with. Yep. Um, so um, I am amazed at two things when that happens. Um, the lack of repentance on the mm -hmm. one who did it yep. and the one who is the victim absorbs it and says yep. it was their fault uh -huh. or they caused it. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just um, stick a dynamite in a campfire. It is. And, and so when you look at successful relationships, one of the key components you're going to find is people owning their responsibility for their, for their actions. Okay, we, in the church world, we call it repentance, right? Uh, so if somebody harms you, they're, and you say, hey, that really bothered me, and they're like, oh, well, you're just oversensitive, or oh, you know, that doesn't matter. Well, that offense is now stuck. It's not resolved. So when David, you know, betrayed God, he took Bathsheba, killed her husband, um, lied to the whole country, you know, <laughs> broke all Ten Commandments, what, what, was the, what was the healing point for him? Mm -hmm. It was when God confronted him very specifically and said, you are the one that's in trouble here. You're the one that did this. Yeah. And he broke and said, you're right. And whatever you say, whatever you decide is fair because you're right, I'm wrong, I completely am responsible. <clears throat> that's where the healing started. That's why I believe David wasn't killed because that was the punishment under the law that he lived under was to, I mean, he broke all Ten Commandments, all punishable by death. Yeah. He, he didn't die. God had mercy on him. And the truth be told, I'm living and breathing because of God's mercy, not my goodness. Mm. So I have to also take that into account. Like, 
you know, I want God to be just with my dad, but I don't want him to be just with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. A <laughs> little bit of a double standard there, yeah, right? right? So I have to realize that I'm living and breathing by God's mercy because I'm no innocent person. I've done tons of evil in my days. Yeah. I probably will again. So God, God's mercy is what sustains me. So I have to also look at the person who's harmed me through those, through those lenses. Now, when I say... God's mercy to me, and I look at the, the person who harmed me through those lenses, it doesn't mean to say, oh, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to sweep it under the rug. I'm just going to act like it didn't happen. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about is that you're going to pray that God will have mercy on them, convict them, bring them to their senses. But if he doesn't, you're going to trust him to take care of you, take care of the justice, and you'll not have a relationship with that person at the same way you used to. And this is where I see people get really hung up is they want to have the relationship that they want in spite of the actions. Look, if somebody's being betray betr is a betrayer, you can't have the same relationship with yeah. them as if they weren't. But people do it all that I can't tell you how many marriages I've talked to where people get betrayed, they get cheated on and they just stay. Because that's what I'm supposed to do. And and the person then does it again and does it again and does it again because there's no consequences. And mm -hmm. you tell me somebody who can get away with an action, no consequences is going to change. Well, they don't. No. Yeah. So um, all the spiritual guilt comes into play here. Um, you know, mm. so I, that's a whole nother level. Right. The bottom line of betrayal is that if you're suffering from it, mm -hmm. uh, don't stay there. No. Nope. And there's a road out. Yep. You got to get clear about what it was. You got to get clear about what the betrayal was. And by getting clear, I mean, you need to write it down. You need to then see where the actual responsibilities of blame lie appropriately. And then, as a result of that, you have to work through a process of forgiveness toward the uh, betrayer. And again, that, all of that can happen without you ever talking to them. Yeah, but uh, forgiveness doesn't mean acceptance, and forgiveness nope. doesn't mean reconciliation. No, it doesn't. No. And that's what I'm saying is, so if the betrayer, as they're confronted, goes, oh, wow, yeah, I see that I did that, and they're broken, and in your spirit, you know they own it. Well, that's the beginning point of a restoration. But in your case, your dad wasn't even alive then mm -hmm. when you finally dealt with it. Yeah, that's right. He wasn't. And, you know, even, <laughs> I don't know. That and in this case, the spouse could have been run off. You yes, know? exactly. And so regardless of, the, regardless of where the betrayer is, if it's causing you harm and it's stuck in your soul, you need to deal with it irrespective of what they do or don't do. And I'm telling you, as I'm living proof that you can deal with an offense from a betrayer without them present. The other thing about this is, all right, let's say you go through the process. Uh, you identify it, you're clear, mm -hmm. and you realize the person who betrayed you, that's where the blame goes. Right. Uh, you want to get out of the revenge business. That's yeah. God's job. Yeah. Uh, you come out of it. But uh, w one of the things that can happen here is that they uh, ignorantly trust people again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, it's... It, it, it does temper you, or you don't trust at all. Yeah. Uh, where's the balance in that? Well, that's, I think the balance comes from going through the process. When you don't go through the process, you tend to be on, on one or two extremes. One extreme is you trust too easily. The other extreme is you don't trust at all. Yeah. And the process helps you uh, sort of, you know, appropriately assess each situation instead of having only one option. And I think uh, we've we're, we're got less than a minute here. The other okay. thing is this. Uh, you got to learn from this. Yes. If you don't learn from it, you'll repeat it. Yeah. Well, and that's what I mean. Is, no. And again, this is another reason why I think there's so much pressure that we need as a group of people called the church. We need to be a safe place. A safe place. If we were that, a lot of this will go away. All right. Veritas Counseling. Uh, you can go to VeritasCounseling.com. Yes. Uh, the phone number is 541-622-6018. Uh, in Jacksonville, 541-622-6018. Or go to VeritasCounseling.com. This show will be on the Dove website. You can go there and take the YouTube address and share it again with yourself or with friends. So we'll see you next time. You're we'll today. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to you. <laughs>
you can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedub.us.